when you use QGIS, QGIS is a desktop user interface application. So you call it a graphical user interface application. QGIS has buttons and toolbars and menus. How do you write code for that? If you see how QGIS looks, this is what QGIS looks like. QGIS has some menus. It has got some toolbars. It has got you know, some widgets where you can browse for files. How do you write code for all of that? So we're gonna learn this new way of programming, writing code, which generates all of these widgets and how we can program to control what happens. So let's dive into this presentation. So we're gonna learn how to write Python code that can generate all these user interface elements and we can write code to control what happens when users click on them. QGS is created using this framework called Qt. This is an open source framework for creating graphical user interfaces, applications like QGIS. This framework provides you an easy way to say, I want a button. I want a dialog box with two buttons. Now, to code this from scratch will require you to really understand what a dialog box looks like, where to place the button, where to place the close box, and so on. If you use Qt, Qt has already figured out how to do all of that. You can write very simple code and say, I want a dialog box with these two buttons. And Qt will create those dialog box just based on your instruction. Qt provides you with widgets that you can use to build your graphical user interface applications. A great thing about Qt is it is cross-platform. That means you can write code once and say, I want a dialog box and Qt will create dialog boxes that are suitable for the user's operating system. And that's why QGIS is also cross-platform. You compile QGIS and it runs on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And the dialog box will appear differently based on the operating system. You don't have to code for that. You just say, I want a dialog box and Qt will figure this out. This was a really in kind of a very interesting decision that Gary Sherman made when he decided to use QGIS, that he used Qt instead of many other frameworks. This being cross-platform proved to be a huge advantage. QGIS is really popular because it's cross-platform and you know, it runs on all operating systems, including now mobile devices. So again, all of the mobile applications, QField and Mergent Maps, they also use the same basic QGIS infrastructure. They don't have to recode this because it's based on Qt and you can compile it for Android or iOS. So QGIS is built using Qt. QGIS also uses those and all the toolbars and menus and buttons you see in QGIS are created using Qt. But Qt, is written in C++. Most of QGS is also C++. So you have to write C++ code to create a button, create a dialog, use some class in Qt, and that's what QGS does. But then writing C++ is a very high bar for most programmers. Python is much approachable to many people. So Qt provides you with an interface to write code in Python which will then run the C++ function and create the dialog. So Qt provides a Python API. That means you can write some Python code and say, I want a dialog box. And that you can describe that in Python. It'll go and find the right class in C++ and execute that class to create the dialog box. And this is what PyQt is. So PyQt is the Python interface to Qt. And that means now you can write Python code, which will create your user interface. What is PyQGIS? Well, QGS itself is also written using C++. It uses the Qt C++ classes and functions. So if you want to control QGS, you want to create a new QGS dialog, what do you do? Again, you have to learn C++, but QGS also provides a Python API. So you can write Python code and execute QGS classes and it'll create your user interface. And that is what is known as PyQGS. So we are learning PyQGS, that is the Python interface to QGI C++ classes and Qt C++ classes. PyQGS has support for both PyQt and PyQGS. That means you can write code to create pure Qt dialogs and pure QGIS dialogs as well. And that means you have to kind of use both in your interface. If you're building a plugin, you want to show some custom dialog box, you can use Qt to create those dialog boxes. When you click OK and you want to run some computation, you can call QGIS class to do the computation. So again, you have to use both when you are writing your PyQGIS code. So that's what PyQGIS is. We're going to learn how to use PyQt and PyQGIS to 
create some user interfaces and then do some useful things within QGIS. We use some QGIS classes in our previous module. And if you notice, a lot of these classes start with this prefix QGS, right? These are all the names of the QGS classes. So there's a class called QGS map layer, QGS vector layer, QGS distance layer. What does QGS stand for? You can take a guess. All right. This is a bit of a QGS trivia you can share with your friend. QGS was not always known as QGS. QGS was known as quantum GIS initially. Right? So QGS came much later. When Gary Sherman was deciding how to name his classes, when you were writing some program, you need to have something unique. So so that when you write import all your QT classes, you should not in, you know conflict with anything. So you need something unique prefix to name your classes unique. He said, okay, QGS, I'm using QT. Most of the QT program classes will have a Q at the beginning. So it indicates it starts, it's based on QT. And then he wanted something unique. So what did he do? Well, he just decided to name the classes after himself. So GS is stands for Gary Sherman. And so every time you use a PyQGS class, you are paying homage to the founder of QGS project. And that's what QGS stands for. All right, so let's do a simple exercise. Let's see if we can write some Python code that will create a dialog box. We want to create a dialog box using PyQt. So your QGS installation also has all the PyQt functions. So you can use all any of the PyQt classes and create some user interfaces. We'll create a message box and that message box will look like this. That will just give you a message box saying, click OK to confirm. And you have an OK button and you have a cancel button. So how do we write code for creating a button like this? We're going to use this class called Q message box, which is a QT class. It's not a QGS class. It's a QT class to create a dialog box like this. Q message box is again, QT follows the same object oriented programming style where you have different widgets that are inherited from other child widgets. So in QGS and QT, all the widgets that you see, any toolbar, dialog boxes, everything is inherited from an object called Q object. And you can take a Q object, create a widget like a button or a drop down or a menu bar that's called a widget. So a widget will inherit Q object and it's create a widget. There are different kinds of widgets. Q dialog is a kind of Q widget and it's a kind of dialog box that you can see will show different kinds of dialogs and you have a dialog. The Q message box is a kind of dialog which is used for kind of giving kind of a modal dialog. It'll block everything else and say, choose something. Do you really want to save this? You want to discard changes? If you see those kind of dialog boxes, those are Q message boxes. And again, new coding for this thing, we'll see the documentation for Q message box shortly. You say, I want to do something. I want to change the window size. You will not have any methods in the documentation of Q message box. So what do you do? Well, you go to Q dialog. And there you'll see some methods that allow to control the size of that dialog. So again, this is how all the classes are built. So if you want to do something, if you do not find any methods that does this, you have to go to the child class and see if there are methods available in the child class for doing the same thing. Let's see how we can write code for that. So now start working on the section 5.2. I'm going to just show you the code step by step, and then later you can try running it yourself. So we'll switch to QGIS. We have opened the Python console and the code editor here, and we're going to start writing some code here. I'm going to open the documentation for the Q message box class. This is the Qt documentation. And if you are, want to build any user interface, you have to refer to the Qt documentation. You have the constructor here to create a Q message box. You can just say, I want a Q message box object. You can construct it using this constructor. You can specify a parent. Some, um, many of these user interfaces will have a parent-child relationship. You can have a parent or not, it's optional. So everything in italics is optional. So we can just say, I just want a Q message box. So I'll just say, I want to create a Q message box with no parent, just want a standalone message box. So you can just initialize the message box like this. Let's save it into a variable called MD. So we have our message box now and we can see it. To see it, we have to just say, mb.exec. So let's show me the dialog. So let's run this. And you can see, I see something here. I see an empty message box. And again, I didn't specify how to create this. Qt created this for me just by creating this class. Looks great, but I want to just actually make it more useful. 
let's see what other things we can do. So you can see these are all the methods that are available for us to kind of control the behavior of this message box. We have this method here called set text. Set text will set what text you want to display on the message box. So let's call that. And again, this is a method. So we need to call this on an object. So it's mb.setText. And we'll just say click OK to confirm. Let's run this and see. You can see now I have a dialog box, which has a text which says click OK to confirm. By default, you get only one button, OK. We also want to add a cancel button. So how do we specify what buttons want in a dialog box? Let's see if we have some functions for doing that. If you see the different functions available, there is a function here called set standard buttons. This allows you to configure what buttons you want to display on your message box. And again, Qt comes with a bunch of standard buttons that you can use. You can also do a custom button, but most likely you want to use one of the standard buttons that is available here. To see the standard button, what are available, you can see there are, again, some class variables that are available here. You can use this class variable to see what buttons you want to use. So we have this OK, Open, Save, Cancel, and all of those buttons available here. If you read the documentation, it says if you want to display more than one button, there's a way to combine those and have more than one button. So let's just add both a cancel button and an OK button. So we have QMessageBox.cancel and QMessageBox.OK. So I'm going to say I want MB.set standard buttons and I want both QMessageBox and I want QMessageBox.cancel. I want these two buttons. I have a typo. So you can see now I have my dialog box, which has got two buttons now. And again, I had to just write a few lines of code and you could do this. If you run this on your machine, you would see this dialog completely different if you're on Windows or Linux. Qt will create a dialog box that feels native to the operating system without you having to do anything different. We'll learn how to now control. When you display a dialog like this, you want the, if the, what happens if the user says cancel? What happens if the user says okay? you want to take some action. So let's see how do we know what happens and how to control when the user does something. So when you close the dialog or click some button, the value of that is stored, is returned by this function mb.exec. We'll just store this as a return value. And let me just print that. So if I run this and if I press cancel, you can see it returns some value. If I press okay, it returns some different value. And I can use that and say, if this value was equal to this, that is cancel. If this value was this, it was okay. These values are actually decided based on the options, the buttons that you chose. Each button has a specific value that it returns and the combination will return a unique value. So we can just compare that value with the button's written value and see if that button was pressed. So we can say if the written value was Q message box, dot okay so if this was the written value you can say we'll print you pressed okay and if the return value is was cancelled you can say you pressed So now we have this piece of code which can display a dialog. And when the user says something, you know what user did and you can take some action on that. So similarly, if I press OK, my code will press OK. Try this out. We have this code here. I want all of you to go to the course material and go and copy this code. Open your Python console, open the editor and try pasting this code and see if you are able to create the dialog box. And compare your dialog box with mine. If you are on Mac, it'll seem similar to this. Again, it respects the theme that you set. I've, I've chosen a specific theme of QGS. It respects the colors and layout of those. So again, all of this is handled by the underlying framework. You can display different icons along with the text here. 
So go to the Q message boss class and see if you can find a function that allows us to set some icon. You have this method called set icon. And this set icon will take a Q message box icon variable and say, I will set that icon. So we'll run this on set icon. How do I run this? What do I type to set this? So I want to run this method set icon. So because we have a message box and we will set icon to it. And again, if you see the documentation, there are five kinds of icons available. We can set any of this. The default is no icon. We can have a question mark, information, warning, critical. Let's do a warning, Q message box dot warning. You can see I have a warning icon in my dialog and you can change it to any other default one. Again, the idea here is you need to get comfortable reading both the PyQGIS documentation and Qt documentation when you're working with PyQGIS. Once you get comfortable, you'll know where to look for and how to use a particular function. We'll do a lot of practice of that as well. The documentation is harder to read on the Qt side because it's all C++. So it doesn't feel very Pythonic. But at least on the QGIS side, you have a nice PyQGIS documentation, which has all the Python terminology and Python classes. Here you have a C++ classes, but they are the ones that are being called. Sometimes people often say that, you know, oh, QGIS, you're using Python. The Python would be very slow. You should use C++. Well, you are just using the Python API. All the work is actually being done by C++ code. So if you run any tool here from the processing toolbox, or if you add a layer and the layer gets rendered, all of the work is being done by the C++ classes. If you write some PyQGIS code, you write some plugin, only Python is used to describe what you want using the PyQt and PyQJS API, and the real work happens using C++. So it doesn't take any performance hit. So that's the reason you are not doing using Python for doing work. You're just using Python to describe what to do.